Hello, I'm Sheehan Abbott. And I'm Shelby Abbott. And welcome to Learn the Sword on TGN. This is a weekly show with a new episode every Friday. So just click below to view the whole program. Yeah. Yeah. During our last lesson in the review section, I switched out the cut and used a different one. Instead of executing a Shinchoku Giri, the first cut you learned in your series, I switched it out for a different one, which is widely used in the Hapo Giri series. This is called an Hidari Kesa Giri. Hidari Kesa Giri, a left downward diagonal cut from your top right to your bottom left or an angle from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock. I will demonstrate this cut that basically follows the monk's robe. For centuries, the Japanese have been using that as a guideline. Just like my top here that has a high angle, you follow this collar and it gives you good center mass for cutting. Before we start cutting angles, I want you to understand it isn't about your hands cutting the angles. It's about the tip of the sword and the mono uchi in this area cutting the angles. That way you'll have a much better executed cut and follow through. Hidari Kesegiri. Cutting from about 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock following the monk's robe, I want you to cut from the top right down to the bottom left. After you've executed the cut and you want to set up for the next one, just bring the sword around, keeping it close to your shoulders, heads, and ear up this way. Lift it above your head. Make sure your left hand is above your hairline. And you lift the sword about one fist distance above your head. And then execute another Hidari Kesa Giri. Let's add this cut to your first kata, but without involving all the protocol. Eep! Yeah. In kata one, and most every other kata, that shows you how to defend yourself. But getting in and out of the target area is always different due to your opponent continuously moving. Even if you don't have a sword, and you're brandishing a broomstick or a baseball bat, your opponent will get out of harm's way and try not to get hit. Let's add some practicality to this scenario. I will now demonstrate the execution of both cuts using steps and not using steps to get to the target area. Eep! Yeah! Eep! Yeah! Eep! Yeah! Now you'll be able to chase down your opponent and beat the tar out of him. With Boken in hand, let's go from a Chudon stance to a Jodon stance. From here, I want us to think about a couple of few focal points. One in particular is the focal point relation to the sword to the top of your head. Make sure your left hand comes above your forehead around where your hairline is and bring it down to the top of your head so it can easily follow the contour of your skull. From here, lift it up about one fist's length. This way, you'll be able to cast the sword and execute cuts a lot easier and smoother. Here are some focal points I want you to work with. A rectangle will give you a deeper cut and a square will give you a wider obtuse angle for your cuts, about 45 degrees compared to 20, 25 degrees with a rectangle. I want you to come in with a rectangle and cut from the, from the top right all the way down to the bottom left and vice versa, from the top left all the way down to the bottom right. Of course, when you have a wider angle and I cut from the type right all the way down to the bottom left and vice versa, 
the angle is quite wider. Of course, when you practice your downward and horizontal cuts too, follow the same patterns. Because if you can follow these patterns, your cuts will be more consistent. Let's practice the first kata with all the formalities, protocol, and all the executed techniques and cuts that we've learned so far. And... Yeah! Let's discuss a Migi Gyaku Joho Giri. Migi Gyaku Joho Giri, an upward diagonal cut from your lower left to your upper right, or an angle from 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock. You can practice a Migi Gyaku Joho Giri with two hands, but at this time in your training, we will only be using one. For example, it on a horizontal cut, and your Migi Gyaku Joho Giri. It, as you can see, it comes up at an angle this way instead of going horizontal or, of course, coming down. Without any formalities, let's practice the draw on a Gyaku Joho Giri. It, and bring it in again. Sword up, triangle, right foot forward, turn the sword, left hand on your hip, and cut upward from seven o'clock to one o'clock. Now we've learned four cuts out of the basic eight. Let's review and see what we've done. First, we have the vertical cut, your horizontal cut, your downward diagonal cut, and your reverse upward diagonal cut. Let's practice and review these. Practice these four cuts until your muscle memory sets in. By then, you will have the basic understanding that can take you on to the next lesson. For those of you who want to practice a bit more, here is some extra credit for you to learn the basic footprint on Kata 2. It... Yeah! In this fourth lesson, we have gone over a downward diagonal cut, an upward diagonal cut, completed the first kata, and have given you a little insight to the second kata. I am Shihan Abbott, and I look forward to seeing you next Friday on TGN. Until our next lesson, be well.